Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up where I left off last time, reading the text in the description of this video, Why Sex Should Be After Marriage, on a channel called The Bell V TV. Radio, here we go. Some venereal diseases have no symptoms, and many couples discover many years later that they became infertile because of these diseases. Infertility experts estimate that 80% of today's infertility is due to venereal diseases contracted before they married. The best and only method that guarantees 100% against AIDS and other STDs is to wait for marriage to have sex and maintain fidelity in your marriage. No! It's not a 100% guarantee against AIDS and other STDs. HIV can be passed from mother to child or by sharing infected needles. Perhaps you marry someone who has been carrying an STD, STI, for years, unknowingly, and they pass it on to you. Marriage as an institution doesn't provide some 100% magical shield against STIs. That's not how reality works. Moving on. Premarital sex breaks the Ten Commandments given by God. The Ten Commandments are given to man by God to make man happy. They are not outdated and they are not restrictive. If we follow these laws, we can create happy and prosperous lives. If we don't follow them, we will pay a heavy price in divorce, disease, abortions, illegitimate children and loneliness. Modern men make a big mistake when they think that they can break these eternal laws and not suffer the consequences. Yeah, so don't piss God off would be the theme. Don't piss him off by sticking your willy in unmarried women. That's a no-no. Okay, disease. Again, marriage isn't a magical shield. Divorce? Well, infidelity isn't the only reason people go their separate ways, is it? Ever heard the term irreconcilable differences? Abortions. Married women have abortions. It happens. The Ten Commandments, the first three of which reveal an insecure little god, yeah, insecure little tribal deity. As moral codes go, taken as a whole, this, yeah, the Ten Commandments, it is restrictive, unnecessarily so, and yes, it is outdated. Do we really need the Bible to tell us that killing, stealing, and bearing false witnesses is wrong? No. No is the answer, a resounding no. Premarital sex is wrong because God said so. Yeah, not a compelling argument for me. Anyway, next bit of text. Premarital sex runs the risk of conceiving illegitimate children. Numerous scientific studies show that children of single mothers suffer psychologically and are less successful socially and academically than children from intact families. Above all, children need both their father and mother. It is wrong to risk having children who will never have their father's love, protection and care. Well, hmm. It's been true in various parts of the world throughout history. 
you knock a girl up, you marry her. If you don't, you're in uh, big trouble, yeah. But, again, I have to point to reality here. Non-married couples can and do stay together. Stay together to raise children, and they bring up kids in an environment where decent female and male role models are present. Doesn't always work like that, of course, and yeah, many kids suffer in single parent families, but by no means all, by no means all. Yeah, children, they do need decent role models of both genders, of both sexes. I'm not disputing that. Final paragraph here. If you date and you don't have sex, you can forget about that relationship when you stop dating. But if you have sex with those you date and then break up, the nature of intimate involvement creates strong, often unpleasant memories for your whole life. Every relationship you break up where you did have intimate relations is like a mini divorce. The psychological difficulties of these mini divorces does damage to your character. Later, when you are married and go to bed with your beloved spouse, these unpleasant memories will accompany you. Right. No, not all relationship breakups are like mini divorces. A mini divorce, no. In fact, that's not even a credible term to employ. Not all breakups are messy or emotionally troubling. An amicable understanding is possible. I've had them. No tears, no hard feelings. It was fun knowing you. All the best. Yeah. First sentence of this paragraph, this final paragraph. A sexless relationship can simply be forgotten. No heartache. Bullshit. Yeah. I can still remember my first girlfriend. Feelings running strong. Her image... It really is... Feels like it's burnt into my brain. Yeah. We didn't have sex. But... Our short relationship had a lasting effect on me. You know? when you're young. So yeah, there it is, response over with. Feel free to comment and rate and subscribe as well if you would be so kind. Yeah. That being said, I bid you a good day ladies and gents. Peace.